Welcome to the Stairway to Heaven. We're coming to you through the Exxon TV channel to bring insights into the ever-changing high-frequency currents now bathing the planet and affecting us all. The source of vital information for the evolving human being. I'm Golda Wiecka. The Evil Fomorians All shamanic cultures recognize the power of performing ceremony during a time of year supporting the intention of the right. The Celtic season of Samhain marks the end of the growing season. A festival of harvest is held from October 31st through November 1st, while the Samhain season is November 1st through January 31st. Samhain is also the Celtic New Year and considered to be the end of the light half of the year. Traditionally a time of inward turning and contemplation, Samhain is associated with the coming of death and remembrance of ancestors. It's considered the time when the veils between realities, the land of the living and that of spirit, are the thinnest. Samhain was the predecessor to our current celebration of Halloween, or All Hallows' Eve, characterized by ghouls, goblins, and things that go bump in the night. Due to the thinning of the veils and the natural sorting and discerning activities of the harvest, it's the best time of year to engage in the battle of the evil Fomorians. In Irish Celtic mythology, the Fomorians were believed to be gods of chaos and wild nature. They inhabited Ireland in ancient times and were considered a semi-divine race. Fomorians were thought to be demonic prehistoric giants who raided and pillaged Ireland. One of my favorite Celtic shamanic teachers, Tom Cowan, addresses the myth of the evil Fomorians from a shamanic perspective. He explains these so-called demons are actually created from our half-formed dreams, wishes, and intentions. These unmanifest, unprocessed wishes and dreams tie up our creative power or compromise our frequency. This leaves us vulnerable to plague and misfortune as individuals and as a community. Each All Hallows' Eve is a sacred duty of every good Celtic shaman to battle the evil Fomorians in order to protect the communities from plague and misfortune the following year. We've been conditioned to be consumers. It's easy to idly wish, dream for things, totally unaware that we're actually using our personal power on the quantum level to set our intent in motion. Once our intent is set, part of our personal power engages at the quantum level to build an energetic matrix around which our creation can start to manifest. Soon, opportunities and promptings start to show up in physical reality, generated by the matrix our intent is set at the quantum level. Not understanding the invisible process and believing ourselves powerless, we don't recognize the promptings that would lead to our creations. Nor do we see the things and opportunities showing up to provide the raw materials to create our wishes. Therefore, we don't take advantage of them. Powerlessness is a passive state rather than an active one, so we don't follow up on our creations. We simply give up, forget our original intent, and go on to the next wish. We never dissolve the old structure, leaving part of our personal power bound in an abandoned matrix. We don't understand the importance of going back and freeing up our energy should we decide the original wish is no longer something we want to pursue. Life becomes complicated by the proverbial too many irons in the fire with none getting hot. Passing fancies tie up energy and resources when the spiritual aspect of our intent is not managed. This situation eloquently demonstrates how unconscious we are in the use of personal power. It shows what happens when we fail to honor the expansion and contraction of life. Breathe in and release. Create and destroy. We're so programmed to forever seek more, we actually ensure our inability to manifest. The Celtic season of Samhain is an excellent time to review the things we've wished for or tried to create in the past year and reevaluate if they still deserve our zeal. If not, we can simply intend to reclaim the personal energy that's tied up in the project before letting it go. Conscious management of personal power is key to an abundant and healthy life. As an individual, family, or community can greatly benefit from deeply examining what's being considered for creation in order to discern if it's worth the investment of personal power and time and energy. By closely scrutinizing our wants, we can begin to recognize when they're driven by consumer programming rather than true need or desire. Once a worthy goal has been established, keeping a journal of what 
we initiate is a powerful way to anchor our intent. It also provides a great reference during Samhain to reevaluate and release what no longer deserves our energy, freeing power to manifest anew. Thank you for joining me, Gwilda Wiecka, on the Stairway to Heaven, where we provide updates on the energetic currents facilitating our evolution into conscious, powerful co-creators. Until next time, may you be blessed on your sacred path to wholeness. We are here. The time is now.